Suicide Six Ski Resort in Vermont. I'm here for a full week of skiing. It's going to be a nice break, and it's nice to see snow. I don't get snow down in Southern Virginia, but Suicide Six, that's a funny name for a ski area. I asked around and was told the name came from a steep mountain that was marked as hill number six on a map. The guy who made the ski runs back in the day said it would be suicide to go down that one. And there you have it, the name stuck, Suicide Six. It was a nice place, wide easy trails for me to get reacquainted with being on skis. After a half day of green, then blue runs, I got some hot chocolate from a local cafe. While waiting for it to be made, I again asked about the strange name. I asked which hill was hill number six, the one that would be suicide to go down. There is no hill number six, the barista snapped, wiping down the espresso machine. That's just what we tell out of towners so they don't get scared about what really happened. But I thought, my mind drifted. No hill number six? That's not what I was told. That's not what I read. A woman at the cafe overheard us and butted in. James, you scaring tourists again? Nah, Peggy, I'm just telling them the truth. They deserve to know it. They deserve to know these hills are haunted. I give them a crooked look. Haunted? What kind of games are these locals playing? Haunted, I say. What do you mean, haunted? I'd been to one haunted place before, and no thank you, I'd rather not be at somewhere else that's haunted. My haunted experience was about 10 years ago in Rhode Island. They turned some old asylum into a haunted house. I know there were people in masks and all that, but I saw something else there too. Someone floating. A ghost. It shook me up so much that I swore off all haunted houses and anything horror after that. The barista continued, Listen, that stuff about hill number six, that's hogwash. Well, I guess it's true enough as far as anyone knows. There is a steep run, Black Diamond, and I could see back in the early days of skiing that someone would think it would be suicide going down it. But the run really ain't that bad. It's nothing compared to some of those peaks in the Alps. So, it's true then? I ask. True enough, I suppose, the barista said. But you said it was haunted. The barista leaned over and jerked his head, motioning for me to get close to him. Then he looked around to make sure that Peggy nor anyone else was in the earshot. Listen, the real reason it's called Suicide Six is because six kids died up in those hills. They jumped together off a cliff. They committed suicide. That's the true origin of the name. And they say their spirits haunt the trail, trying to get other skiers to ski right off the cliff, right to their death. That's why we don't have night skiing here. They're worried about those ghosts haunting the trails and calling people to their deaths. Oh, here's your hot chocolate. When I take the hot chocolate, the barista winks at me. I'm unsure what to say, so I simply say thanks and head out the door. That afternoon, I skied until the 4 p.m. closing time. My legs were fried anyways. It had been so long since I had been skiing. Even if they were open at nighttime, I couldn't handle it. My legs were too wobbly. I barely made it down that last run without doing a face plant. I think the best part of skiing is the apres ski, as the French call it, drinking after skiing. And unlike the French, we've got some amazing breweries near our slopes. Tonight, I'm having the best beer Vermont has to offer, Hetty Topper. I was lucky to get my hands on a four-pack, so that's what I'm drinking. All of it. I'm not sure how my head will feel in the morning, but what the hell, I'm on vacation. The first run of my second day is brutal. My legs feel like jello in my head. Well, let's say I shouldn't have had that last beer last night. I start on a blue run and get down the mountain slow. But at least I'm early. There aren't too many people here yet gives me more room on the slopes, which is very much appreciated right now. I'm also assuming people aren't here because the visibility isn't that good. It's really foggy and I can see maybe 10 yards ahead of me. The weather report says it's supposed to clear in the afternoon though, so I'm assuming that's when more people will be here. I do another blue run and my legs are either becoming numb or they're getting loosened up. 
I'm feeling better, or at least I'm not feeling so wobbly. I got my ski legs under me. Is that a thing? Ski legs? Like sea legs? I may have just made it up, but it sounds good, so I'm going to go with it. Ski legs. A third blue run and I'm back to where I should be, skiing with confidence, though I'm still a bit slower on account of the fog. It's really rolling in up here on top of the mountain. And if it was busier, I could easily see people crashing into each other when they got off the lift. Speaking of fog, I'm also a bit lost now. I got bored with the same blue run three times in a row, so I went up a different chairlift. I thought I was going to another blue run. I'm not quite ready for red yet, but the sign at the top of the mountain, it doesn't make much sense. It shows blue, black, red. So which is it? I don't have my resort map on me, and because the fog's so bad, I can't look down to get my bearings. I'm guessing the trail split up, like everyone starts in the same spot, but then you choose your own adventure. But still, I don't want to head down something I can't handle. Maybe I can pizza my way down the red. That's what I call the way I stop, where I push the ski tips inward. It looks like a pizza slice, at least in my mind. But if I get to the black run, I'm toast, especially with this hangover. I've been standing here for five minutes now at the top of this hill, guessing what I should do. I gotta make a decision. But the sign, what if I take a wrong turn? What if I end up on black? Each second the fog gets worse too. I can see them closing the lift soon if this keeps up. And I'm not sure the weather report was correct about it lifting. It just gets worse and worse. Through the fog, I can see a group of people standing on the other side of the run. They're probably doing the same thing I'm doing, trying to figure out what the hell to do. At least they're a group so they can make a group decision. And maybe they're local too. Maybe they know which run is which. I take my goggles off trying to see if I can see better. It doesn't help much, but I think it looks like a group of young boys. I think so. Teenagers, maybe. Though it's kind of hard to see through the fog. The whole world looks white and fuzzy, like we're in the clouds. Which run is blue? I shout over to them. Follow us, one of them shouts back. My muscles are getting cold just standing around, so follow them. I guess, why not? I don't have a better plan and I gotta get down off this mountain. The group descends the hill together, not waiting for me to get ready. And they're flying, I mean really gliding down the mountain. I have to dig my poles into the snow and push off trying not to lose them through the fog. I'm going a bit faster than I'm comfortable with, trying to keep up with this group of boys, but the piste isn't too steep, so it's okay. The group keeps their pack formation, bunched together tight, flying down in a straight line. I've seen little kids ski like this, with no fear, tearing down a mountain with no turns and no braking. It scares the hell out of me when I see them do that. These boys, they're the same, and they're putting more distance between us. I can barely see them now. And then, they're gone, lost to the fog. I stop to look for them and also try to figure out where I'm at. Ahead of me, the trail splits into three. Which way did they go? Which way do I go? Which way's the blue run? Hey guys, which way do you go? I shout into the white nothingness and my voice echoes off the trees. Which run do I take? No answer. Only the wind blowing misty cold air across my face and snow across my skis. Those teenagers are nowhere. I can feel my pulse increasing as I stand indecisive and alone. Each beating thump of my heart makes my brain hurt. I won't be drinking four heady toppers ever again. Follow us, I hear. It's the teenagers. I can't see them. I can barely see the skis on my feet. But I can tell it's coming from the leftmost run. This way! Follow us! I orient my skis and push off. It seems like the leftmost run has the most trees, which I'm not too thrilled about. It's also narrow, too. 
But as I ski, I can see that group again, still going downhill like a banshee. No fear. I need to catch up with them. I'm still too far away. Their outlines are faint and I don't want to lose them again, not in this weather. I bring my skis together and push with my poles to increase my speed. It's much faster than I'm comfortable going, but I figure it'll be okay just for a minute. I need to catch them and not get separated. Hold up, I shout, though I don't think my voice carries far. The ski run narrows more, brown blurry tree trunks pinching me in wet heavy mist. And then I see it, the sign. It's not blue, it's not even red. It's black, a black diamond. I'm on suicide six, hill number six. A paralyzing fear comes over me and my body goes rigid. I feel myself getting dizzy. I'm cold, my head pounding, my heart skipping a beat. My stomach drops like I'm on a roller coaster. I don't want to be on this run. I can't. I don't have the skills. I want to stop, but I can't move my skis. No pizza, no turning. I'm dive bombing to hell, just like those teenagers. No turning, no slowing. Following those boys, those ghostly boys floating down the mountain. My face is tight as the wind whips it and I can't see the snow or the ground. I stare off into the foggy white abyss of nothing. It's purgatory, suicide. Follow us, I hear the boy say. Follow us down. Straight down now, double black diamond, faster than a greyhound. I'm out of control and I'm off piece now, going through virgin snow. One ski's in the air, my leg up like a dog taking a pee. Whack! I didn't see it coming. A tree branch whacks my face, causing me to lose balance. I'm brought back to reality as I come crashing down, my entire body snow plowing into fresh powder. I shake off the snow and take off my goggles. There's no boys, no yelling for me to follow them. I'm at the edge of a cliff, a few more feet and I would have gone over. Hitting that tree saved my life. I ended up walking down the rest of the run. Well, not walking, I scooted on my butt. I didn't even take my skis. I left them there next to the tree in an X formation, hopefully warning other skiers about the cliff ahead. Back at the cafe, I seek out James, the barista. I wanted to tell him I saw the boys, the cliff, Suicide Six, he was right all along. I started telling my tale when Peggy, the manager, overheard and said loudly, Hush now, you keep quiet about that stuff. You keep talking like that and it's going to scare the customers away. We need all the business we can. There ain't no ghost. You saw nothing.